It's not easy to bear the heavy burden of air to the relatively inexpensive, but once very convincing Opel Vectra. We find out how the Opel Insignia copes with this task in the secondary market. The reputation of the Opel Insignia is ambiguous both among owners and professionals. In general, the attitude towards the car, which appeared as a successor to the Vectra C in 2008, is positive. However, due to a number of chronic, but not fatal, sores, the model is considered damp. The departure from the course set by Vectra for practicality in favor of premium worked only in Europe, where sales were significant. In our country, the audience did not show enthusiasm due to the high price. But in 2011, Insignia began to be assembled in Russia, the price dropped, and the situation partly changed for the better. Sedan, hatchback, station wagon. Possibility to order an all-wheel drive system. Adaptive dampers. A lot of modern options and rich finishes. Together with powerful engines, the bouquet was rich. Only naturally aspirated engines stand out against the rainbow background, gasoline 1.6 and 1.8, which were offered in Russia exclusively with manual gearboxes. The first turned out to be clearly weak for a heavy car. It was quickly removed, and the 140 horsepower 1.8, also far from titanium, still took a small market share due to its low cost. The 2.8 liter V6 is considered the most hassle-free. However, the main accusations against him, expensive maintenance and high fuel consumption, make this version not the most popular in the secondary. The most popular kit was a 2.0T petrol turbo engine, 220 horsepower, with automatic transmission. Alas, the motor was capricious. Even at a young age, he sinned with traction failures. Usually, rebooting the system helped for some time, turn the ignition off and on again, but the symptom clearly indicates an early replacement of the turbocharger, 80,000 rubles. In addition, problems with overheating and stretching of the timing chain are not uncommon. And in the end, it remains for us to advise only the 2.0 CDT turbo diesel, 160 horsepower, the troubles with which remain within the framework of standard diesel adventures. The motor is reliable, which ultimately allows you to put up with its increased noise and vibration. And for efficiency and dynamics, he is forgiven for problems with starting at temperatures below minus 25 degrees. With the transmission, as a rule, during humane operation, there are no problems earlier than 200 to 250,000 kilometers. At the manual gearbox, the clutch runs for 120,000 kilometers or more. However, frequent replacement of the clutch, if someone overdoes the work with the left foot, entails the replacement of an expensive two-mass flywheel, more than 100,000 rubles. The Eisen automatic machine is among the very strong ones, it travels up to 300,000 kilometers without repair with a timely oil change every 60,000 kilometers. But the weak design of the torque converter friction lining, and even faster aggressive driving style, can finish him off. Do not chase versions with all-wheel drive. They are more troublesome than useful. The clutch quickly overheats and fails in all-wheel drive. Leaks of the working fluid in the limited slip differential also lead to the same result. Any Opel oil seals are traditionally considered weaklings. Insignia does not suffer from body ailments. Even on chips, corrosion does not take root very soon, and on the bottom it is difficult to distinguish a 5-6 to six year old car from a 1 year old one. First of all, rust settles in the area of door hinges, and not on the body, on the door itself. Of the body equipment, rear view mirrors are recognized as the weakest link, in rain and slush, nothing can be seen in them. There are many complaints about the fragility of the trunk lock and regular glitches of the rear parking sensors, the wiring is to blame. This is where the fun begins. Electrician. She is the real scourge of the Opal Insignia. And if there were a little less wiring defects, non-contacts, brain collapses and other electrical misfortunes, the car could be safely considered the queen of the secondary market. Everyone has different electrical problems, but everyone has them. Modernization in 2011 corrected something, but in general the picture has not changed much. So the rules for choosing a car remain the same, the poorer the equipment, the less time you will lose in the future in search of a good electrician. And finally, the pendant. Here the principle is the same as with the electrician. The standard version is quite good and even reliable. But as soon as the conversation turns to the optional, intelligent, flex ride system, electronically controlled racks, problems arise. When an electronics failure, for example, kicks into the stiffest suspension setting on a grater, the shaking drives you crazy. So you should choose a suspension on the secondary according to the same principle. 
the simpler, the better. Transmission. The automatic transmission can work with shocks. Not uncommon in freezing, when the tachometer increases speed, but in fact there is no acceleration. The recipe is the same, reboot. Helps almost always. And in the future, a flashing. Annoying an all-wheel drive transmission, hold X4. At the slightest overheating, the car remains front-wheel drive. Engine. Due to the tight layout of the engine compartment, any work on the 2.8 engine requires its dismantling. Under the hood with any motor is crowded, hence poor air circulation, which leads to overheating. Radiators need to be flushed annually. All motors lose antifreeze. The reasons are a burst expansion tank, 7.5 thousand rubles, or a hose, a thermostat defect, 14 thousand rubles, or a leak in the head gasket. Suspension. There are few claims to the running gear. They complain about the noise of the suspension in cold weather, especially in versions with adaptive flex ride shock absorbers, the cost of which will unpleasantly hit. Closer to 100,000 kilometers, the rear wheel bearings and stabilizer struts are surrendered. The front struts have to be changed twice as often. The rest of the chassis elements are capable of operating for 150,000 or more thousand km. Body. The model exemplarily resists corrosion not only due to galvanization, but also due to the treatment of cavities in the bottom with anti-corrosion compounds. Misted headlights, however, are not uncommon, and the chrome-plated decoration of the body, especially the glazing, becomes cloudy in one winter. The only solution is to replace parts. Headlight washer covers often fly off from the headwind, consumables. Electrician. Many glitches are solved, again, by a banal restart of the engine. Yes, and other problems will not ruin but there are many. The climate control system can work after the engine is turned off, someone is infuriated by the spontaneous lowering of the windows, others are tormented by the central lock, others cannot be removed from the electric handbrake.